we're going to be taking a look today at Autodesk Sketchbook Pro and I'm going to be using a bamboo tablet to be able to create some of the sketch geometry inside of Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. There's a variety of different sketch tablets that are available on the market today. Some of these can be purchased, specifically the bamboo can be purchased from Wacom, as well as a variety of other different types of tablets. I'm going to be using this to create some of the sketch geometry inside of Autodesk Sketchbook Pro today. You'll notice the easy heads-up user interface inside of Autodesk Sketchbook Pro. Uh, Sketchbook's going to allow me to create some conceptual designs, uh, in this case, in this hotel room for furniture design that I'm working with um, here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start conceptualizing some ideas. Sketchbook Pro allows us to work in a layered format, so we can actually sit down and start to visualize in this example, uh, the plasma TV stand or the, or the, um, uh, the table that I want to design within this room constraint. Sketchbook Pro allows me to create, for example, this straight line geometry using a ruler. There's a variety of other different types of tools that allow me to create different types of ellipses and other geometry. Using keyboard shortcuts, I can do things like create straight line geometry so I can very easily uh, line up components and create this these conceptual designs much faster uh, than in uh, maybe other uh, paint or diagram tools um, from our competition. Now I'm going to be able to sit down and very easily create these different designs. So I'm going to spend some time uh, generating some of the overall geometry inside the interface. Once I've completed you know, the overall shape of the piece of furniture that I'm designing for, for this room, I'm then going to go ahead and sit down and start creating some detail on, on the unit that I'm actually working uh, the design for. So I'm going to go ahead and create some, some drawer layouts and different things this way uh, within, this, within this room layout. Once I'm generating these, these different drawers uh, in this design, I'm going to go ahead and start applying some different color variations. So very easily I can go over, my, go over to my color tablet, grab different variations, start to perfect or, or design the conceptual components or the conceptual colors that I want to use possibly for this design and start to visualize what um, this stand is going to look like in the room. So very quickly I can come up with multiple conceptual designs for this room layout. Now the nice thing is I'm working in a layered format so I can turn off specified models or turn those back on. I'm going to go through and turn some some models that I've previously built in this design uh, for use. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the bed on, also some of the nightstands, so I get a better visual understanding of, of what's going on in this room design to help me better collaborate with uh, manufacturing for preparation of actually designing some of these components uh, inside of Autodesk Inventor. I'm going to go ahead and create some additional detail as well. Maybe I want to put some of the, the wood floor models inside of this design so I get a better idea or understanding of what's going on. I have full ability to control the brush layout um, inside of Sketchbook Pro so I get a better understanding and conceptual model of exactly what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly generate some of these these designs to to represent some of the wood floors in this room so I get a color depiction of exactly what's going on. Now once I'm satisfied, if I want to keep those wood floors, I can keep the transparency turned on or turned off. I can start to include other features in the room by turning some of the transparency off on some of those designs and get a better understanding of what's going on. The other thing I might want to conceptualize is some of the color variations of this room. I might be concerned with some of the back walls. Which walls do I want to paint? Which ones do I not want to paint? Uh, what instructions do I want to leave uh, you know, for, um, for construction purposes? I can start to visualize you know, these different colors and ideas and experience this room before it's real so I'm not wasting time um, painting, repainting, 
I'm doing some of this uh, work after the fact. I can do all this work up front. Maybe I want to paint this wall as well. But I get a perfect layout and integration of the furniture that, that I'm working with or designing inside this room and get a better understanding of what's going on. Once these models are um, completed, I'm going to go ahead and open up another pictorial or design that I've generated here of the plasma TV stand and how this is going to look from a different perspective in this room. I also have some different lighting or um, uh, color variations or material selections on the right hand side as well that have laid out in this diagram. Now these images or uh, files can actually be brought directly into Autodesk Inventor. And inside of Autodesk Inventor I can take these two-dimensional sketches or layouts and start to integrate these with 3D design. So I can start to extrude or actually build the furniture as is. So I understand how this furniture is going to be designed in relation to the original two-dimensional conceptual sketches. So I'm not losing you know, geometry or design characteristics within my model. I can turn off some of these uh, sketch designs inside of Autodesk Inventor so they're not interfering with the rest of the actual three-dimensional as-built designs and start to visualize what this table or TV stand is going to look like before actually building these products. So now I can collaborate tools like Autodesk Sketchbook Pro with Autodesk Inventor to truly experience my components before they're real. So Autodesk Inventor allows me to take information that's been created inside of Inventor and pass that information over to Revit. So I can simply take this model and pass this over to Revit. So I'm going to go ahead and place a new user coordinate system to define how this should be laid out inside of Revit. I'll go ahead and export this information. If I want to shrink wrap it, I have the capabilities to do that. I'll define that this is a piece of furniture to be used so that the uh, center of gravity, the mass, the different properties that I want related to a piece of furniture are going to come across properly into Revit as a piece of furniture. I'll go ahead and define this out, and save this off using my BIM exchange tool inside of Inventor. It's going to save it off as an, in an ADSK format. So that's the uh, file type that Autodesk uses to exchange data between Inventor and Revit. And I'll simply go ahead and open this, this model up inside of Revit. So I'll go ahead and browse off to the file location where I just saved off this room layout new file. Go ahead and open this up. And it will go ahead and load this model directly into Revit. So um, the actual geometry and everything as I built it inside of Inventor is now clearly come across into the Revit interface. So there's a seamless interface between the two products. Um, I can apply materials that, I, that I've applied on this geometry if I want. I can also make this shaded. And you know, once I'm, once I'm happy with, the, with the, the products that have been loaded into Revit, I can simply load that into the existing project and go ahead and place that where I want it inside of my model. I'll go ahead and place it there. I'll define the rotation angle and other things that way. But now I've completed my full integration into the Revit interface, and it's just that simple.